how much do you need to live in Argentina every month? That is one of the most common questions that I get asked whenever I post a video about Argentina. And the one that I am going to try to answer today. Hello everybody, my name is Sabrina and today we are going to talk about how much you actually need to live in Argentina. I am going to be talking about rent, food, transportation, self-care, taxes, entertainment, and other miscellaneous expenses. And I will go from least expensive to the the most expensive. Without any further ado, let's get started. Now, there is one thing that I feel like I need to clarify right off the bat, and that is that completing almost every item on this list is guaranteed to either be more difficult or more expensive when you have just arrived to Argentina as a foreigner. When you're still in the process of getting your temporary residence and you have absolutely no physical presence in the country, there will inevitably be some requirements or things that you are missing, and getting around that is not impossible possible, but it will be more expensive. And you will get what I mean as we get deeper into the details of the video. Now, number one on this list is self-care and miscellaneous. This is something that might not apply to many people, but it applies to me because in the last few years, I made a commitment to myself to pay more attention to having a healthier lifestyle than I had before. Come the pandemic, I had a very sedentary lifestyle, a terrible diet, drank almost no water at all. So I started training and paying more attention to what I eat. So I pay for the gym every month, which costs around $12 a month. And then because of my training, I had to start going to PT sessions every week to ensure that my muscles are not all tied up in nuts and causing me pain. And I'd say that the sessions cost about $9 each. So that would be about $36 a month in PT. And the last thing on these list for me is that I buy portable water every two weeks. Even though water from the tab here in Buenos Aires is drinking water, I still don't trust it and the taste is generally not my favorite. However, this is something that you can choose not to do. But let's say that I, you can budget $20 a month for this. Number two on this list is taxes. I know, shocking taxes should be the second least expensive, expensive item here. But like many other things, it might just depend. Now, taxes are such a lovely concept. In Argentina, I am registered as an independent contractor or what is more commonly known here as a monotributista, which means that I sell my services to different companies or individuals. I invoice them for my services and I get paid for them. It's either used by individuals who actually have an independent business or forced onto individuals by companies who don't want to have those employ employees on their payroll. But that's an entirely different discussion and definitely not what I, you clicked on this video for. So moving on. I honestly don't know how to explain Argentine taxes to anyone. That is why I hired an accountant and that's what I believe you should do too. But just for the sake of this video, let's say that if you're on one of the highest tiers in the independent contractor categories and after everything is taken into account, you should probably budget about $50 a month in taxes and then add about $25 uh, on top of that in order to pay your accountant. Number three on the list is healthcare. I pay for private healthcare, even though public healthcare exists in Argentina and the first couple of years I was here, I was able to get by with public healthcare just fine. Paying for private medical insurance just gives you incredible peace of mind because the private institutions are not as packed as the public hospitals are. Whereas I've had to wait for more than three hours in a public emergency room whenever I felt sick enough to go to the ER in the first place, I've never had to wait that long when I've had to go to a private ER. Moreover, hiring a private medical insurance is not expensive at all when you compare it to whatever the deal is in the US. My private insurance even covers dental, even a root canal treatment if I needed one. And dental is such a difficult coverage to get in general. Granted, they don't cover for the crown that I'll need after the treatment, but hey, it's better than nothing. And if I do go to the ER or if I have a medical consultation or something like that, I've never had to pay anything out of pocket. It's all included in my insurance plan. When I had to get a catheter placed because I had an obstruction caused by a kidney stone, I had to be under care for a day and I didn't have to pay anything for the room that they gave me in the hospital. The cost of my medical insurance does go up every day, every day. 
does go up every month, which can be annoying, but it's only logical since it's trying to keep up with inflation. I'm 26 years old and I pay for one of the best insurance plans in the country and I pay about 40 US dollars a month. And for my mom who is 58, I paid the middle tier plan for a different company that is not as expensive, but still covers everything I would need it to cover. And I pay, or I would round up her payment to about $100 every month. Coming in at number four is entertainment. Now, what constitutes entertainment for me? That is basically everything that I do for fun or to decompress from work and just relax and clear my head, which includes going to the movies, eating out with friends, or going to a friend's house in order and ordering takeout, buying books, buying mangas, and streaming services. Now, I honestly don't write down a specific budget for these type of things because, again, this is not something that I do all of like all that often. Like I don't buy books every month and maybe I do buy one or two mangas every month, but they cost less than $4 each. So I don't really include them in a fixed budget. When I do buy books, I buy about three at a time. Normally they cost about $10 each and I pay for them in installments. So that cost kind of dilutes over those months. I either eat out or order takeout with my friends about once a week and let's just say it's about $15 for each of those, given it a healthy budget. And I'm not sure how much it is the total, but streaming services are cheaper here than in other countries. And I do have a bunch of them. So let's just say that I spend about $20 in streaming services every month. I'd say you can personally budget a healthy $100 a month for these type of things, and you're good to go with a healthy social life, but still in moderation. But before we move on, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this coming your way in the future. I'll be talking about life in Argentina, moving abroad and many other things. So stay tuned for more. Now, getting closer to the finish line in number five, we have transportation. This is probably the thing that I spend the least amount of money on because I don't go out very much to places that I cannot go by walking. And when I go out and I cannot go by walking, I've been either taking public transportation, which is very cheap and efficient, or if I am very lazy and it's very far away, I take a taxi, which is not as expensive precisely because I don't go out that often. If I'm going to put a price on a taxi, um, I would say that the average Uber ride might be about uh, 1600 pesos, which right now, if you turn it into dollars with $1 being approximately 958 pesos, that is less than $2 for a regular Uber ride. So keeping all of these things in mind and the fact that I don't go out that often and that when I do, I either walk or take public transportation transportation, which is less than 10 cents a ride and taxes are not that expensive. I really don't have a budget for transportation, but uh, it won't be the biggest chunk of your budget. That is if you are like me and you don't own a car. But if you do own a car, your costs and expenses might be very different. You would have to take into account the costs of gas, vehicle insurance. It will be very likely that you will have to pay for parking space because very little apartments offer the option of a parking spot for a car and also vehicle taxes that are paid every two months here in the city. Because I don't own a car, I absolutely cannot say for sure how much this will cost, but I will budget it at $150 a month just to put a number on it. Here comes a fan favorite at number six, food. Food is something that will vary a lot depending on your specific diet. A lot of my diet is mainly protein because I've been focusing on my fitness goals and with a lot of resistance and cardio training, I need to make sure that I'm consuming enough protein to actually gain more muscle mass. And I have to admit that for the last six years, food was not something that I put a specific budget on every month. I just spent whatever I needed to. But because recently I've had to be more aware of my expenses, I've had to start paying attention to that. So every month for the past three months with my mom, we've been budgeting for about $160 in food. And this really includes any type of grocery shopping that is needed, including cleaning materials. And unsurprisingly enough, about $90 of that entire budget is spent exclusively on protein sources, whether that is beef or chicken or things like that. Vegetables are still kind of something that I don't account for entirely in this budget because it's not something that you can buy at the beginning of the month for the entire month because it goes bath. 
it goes bad. It goes bad. So maybe round it up to $180 for food each month for two people. And last, but definitely not least, lucky number seven, rent. When it comes to rent, you have two options that you can look for. Long-term leases, which right now are three years long versus short-term rentals that are a top of three months long and the requirements for each one are very different from each other. For long-term, the usual requirements are a month's worth of rent to be placed as a deposit for the apartment, first month of rent paid in advance, and last but definitely not least, you will need to get some form of rental insurance. Ideally, for many owners and rental agencies, you have someone who signs the lease with you as a garante who can put down a different property as collateral in your lease in case anything were to happen to the property you're renting. If you're a foreigner like me, however, that is very difficult to find, especially when they usually demand that whoever signs as collateral is a direct family member, which is why the rental insurance serves as a replacement for this. If you hire rental insurance, what that does is that you need to find other people who sign that insurance with you. In case you don't pay for the rent, that company would seize the salaries of the people who signed the insurance with you and use that to pay the rent. The requirements for short-term rentals are usually a lot less strict, but the reason behind this is that you pay a premium when it comes to the price of rent. You're usually asked to just put down a month's worth of rent for the deposit, the month of rent in advance, and usually the rental companies will tell you that you have to pay for a month's worth of rent as a commission to them for arranging the rental. For long-term leases, they are not legally allowed to charge you as the tenant for that commission. As for which one of these options is better for you, it will really depend. Long-term leases are not furnished, which means that while you may pay cheaper rent than a short-term rental, you will have to furnish the apartment, which is something you don't have to do for short-term rentals because you pay a premium in the rent. But you have the downside of not actually owning anything in the apartment. So in the occasion that you move out, you're out of luck. As it happens anywhere else in the world, and like I've already discussed in a previous video in more detail, there are many things that can influence the price of rent in the city. The neighborhood, your proximity to the subway, different commodities nearby like parks, shopping malls, gyms, supermarkets, etc. And to be completely honest, the current rental market in Buenos Aires is crazy. I have to either renew my lease in April 2024 or move to a different apartment, and when I've taken a look at the rental prices, I've wanted to cry a little bit. But depending on your needs and preferences, you can expect to pay anywhere between $300 to $700 a month just on rent. And depending on whether you have a long-term or short-term lease, this price may fluctuate with time and inflation. If you take an average of all of the costs that I've mentioned here and you put them together, you will get a total monthly budget of about $1,098 every month. And you will be living a regularly comfortable lifestyle, but not a life high of high luxury or anything like that. But like I said, a lot of these things depend. You may or may not have to pay for the things that I mentioned before, but do with that what you will. I do hope this helps you give an idea of what costs might be like while being here. And that's all for today. I hope you liked the video. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button for more people like you to find the video. And if you would like to see more videos like this, you might want to check out this video um, where I talk about why I came back to Argentina after spending three months in Europe. I love you. I hope you have a great week or a great rest of your day. I will see you all in the next one. Bye.